Hey, it's Robbie Davidson with Celebrate Truth. I've got a really, really important show tonight. Hopefully you've tuned in, you're excited. If you've heard the news about Pastor Nate Wolf being fired from his church just on Friday, you'd be aware of maybe the story. But for a lot of you that haven't heard, you're in for a real treat tonight because again, he's here to share the entire story. We're gonna start with uh, his backstory. We're gonna get into so many more things. So stay tuned, we've got a lot for you. Hey, Robbie. Like I said, we're here with Pastor Nate Wolf. He's going to be sharing his story. I want to bring him on right away so he can maybe tell a little bit about his backstory and uh, just a little bit about his journey before we get into what took place just recently. Actually, it was Friday morning. Nate, uh, how are you doing? Hey, Robbie. I'm doing very well, actually, con- considering the you know last 72 hours and whatnot. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's, it's absolutely an honor. And I think that this message is so incredibly important. Myself being affected um, and sharing my, my story at uh, the Flat Earth International Conference Canada, um, me and my family, we've actually been kicked out of two churches over this issue. And I go in great detail at the conference and I'll maybe we'll, we'll have some time to talk a little bit more about that. But I think that this is such an important issue and I'm so thankful that you're coming forward and you're willing to share the story because God's word is incredibly important. We're standing on the truth of the word of God with these issues. And, you know, for what took place, you know, Friday morning, I mean, you're going to get into it. And I think it's going to shock a lot of people and it's, it's tragic, but I know that, uh, you know, that God's got huge things in store for you as uh, you continue on. But before we get into that, maybe you could just introduce yourself to my audience. They might not be familiar with who you are. Maybe just explain your upbringing and a little bit of your testimony and how you uh, became a pastor. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you know, I was born in Wisconsin, and uh, when I was just a couple of years old, my family moved up to Anchorage, Alaska, because my dad took a job uh, up there. And uh, so it was kind of an exciting thing. And uh, my mom was about two weeks away from having my baby sister. So, you know, we're driving up the uh, Alaska Canadian Highway in January. Uh, you know, interesting, you know, a three year old and a pregnant wife. And uh, we made it to Alaska fine. And uh, growing up, you know, I went to school there, uh, just really enjoyed being in Alaska. You know, uh, in fact, as I've traveled through Canada a few times, you know, Canada and Alaska seem just about, you know, very similar to me in a lot of ways, just the beauty, uh, especially, you know, over in the mountainous areas. But uh, growing up, you know, as a kid, I did a lot of fishing, uh, you know, just enjoying the Alaskan scenery and outdoors. And uh, as a teenager, you know, pretty much just doing the same stuff. Um, When I graduated from high school, uh, my wife and I, we got married right after high school, you know, so we were pretty young. And uh, everybody was concerned for us, you know, and some people were like, oh, you're not going to make it, you know, and look at the divorce rate and look at this and look at that. And I said, well, you know, we were both uh, committed Christians and we both felt like we were to be together. So we were in this thing, you know, and uh, we just celebrated uh, 26 years in July. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, And we got four, you know, four kids, uh, a young adult and uh, three teenagers, basically. And so when we uh, got married, we moved down south and uh, went to a Bible college down south and got my Bible degree. My wife got a social work degree. And I really enjoyed being down there. It was a good experience for us. And uh, after we graduated, we went back to Alaska uh, for about four or five years. And what happened was when I got out of college, uh, the churches in Anchorage uh, that I had some association with were not hiring uh, a paid minister at the time. So, you know, I've got student loans coming due uh, six months after I graduated and uh got to have an income to pay that off. So I started out actually uh, just working kind of in secular fields. Um, First three months after college, I worked at a 24 hour youth shelter for troubled kids, you know, teens and young kids. And uh, that was kind of a baptism by fire, you know. And uh, after that, I worked as a social worker for the state of Alaska for about two years. Uh, Half of that was in case management, working uh, with children that were in state's custody. The other half was uh, doing investigations for the state uh, for child abuse and neglect. And uh, I ended up kind of getting a wild hair and uh, deciding that I would become a police officer. 
So I went through a six month academy, uh, which was very, you know, grueling. And uh, I thought for a while that, you know, maybe what God wants me to do is just be a Christian cop, you know, because we need good, uh, good cops out there that are believers and uh, want to try to help people in their community, you know, go the extra mile. And uh, after several months of uh, being on patrol, I kind of was getting discouraged because things were so busy. Uh, the force was down many positions. And so you're going from call to call to call. And I just felt like, uh, you know, I wasn't doing ministry, what I had gone to school for. And uh, after a few months, I just, it hit me hard. Like, I got to go back, I got to go into ministry, you know, and people thought I was a little crazy. Um, I quit my job and uh, Lord provided within a month, uh, I had an offer uh, for an interview for a church in Michigan. And so we moved from Alaska to Michigan and I began doing some youth and family ministry for a couple of years. Uh, after that, I kind of got the bug to do full time, you know, preaching and teaching. And so that's kind of how the uh, ministry situation came about. It just, I really had to get back into what I went to school for. Uh, if you consider uh, the years that I've been in ministry, volunteer and paid ministry is almost 24 years. But the last 15 years, I've been in full-time uh, pulpit preaching, ministry teaching. And so that's kind of my, you know, my background, just real quick, growing up and, uh, you know, training for the ministry and, uh, to be honest with you, uh, for a while, I thought that the time as a social worker and a police officer, I kind of felt like maybe I, you know, wasted some time and, uh, you know, but as I got into ministry, I realized that that training was probably some of the best training that I would ever, you know, get aside from uh, book knowledge and Bible college and all that, because it really helped me to understand people and to be able to relate to people, especially in difficult, you know, life circumstances, uh, crises, you know, that sort of thing. And so uh, looking back, I, I kind of feel like uh, the problem for five years after college was not God. The problem was me. I was basically narrow minded and, uh, you know, it was, I was pretty arrogant because I basically was like, okay, Lord, you know, I'm back in my hometown of Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, so basically just give me a job, you know, with the church of my choice sort of a thing. And uh, so I call that my five years of wandering in the wilderness, you know, uh, had to mature up a bit. And uh, looking back on it, that, you know, obviously God knows what he's doing. And he used those five years uh, and my, you know, immaturity and stubbornness to prepare me for ministry and dealing with, with people. Because let's face it, every church, uh, it's just normal people that have life problems, struggles, you know, even sometimes tragedies. And so that's kind of the, you know, what got me prepared to really go into full-time ministry. That's an, uh, incredible. And uh, I know that uh, I was able to meet you at uh, Take on the World Conference in Ohio. And I know that we uh, shared some talks, and I think it was until the last day that I actually found out that you were a pastor um, of yeah. the church. And uh, I was kind of taken back <clears throat> by that because at first you didn't really even mention that, but then all of a sudden we got talking and um, it was a real pleasure to meet you. But uh, let's uh, transition into more recent events. Um, you know, we can talk a little bit about Take on the World. It was a fantastic conference and it was so sure. great meeting so many amazing people. And um, I had such a great time and I'm sure you did as well. But when you got back from Take on the World, maybe you can kind of share you know, uh, what led up to the events um, on Friday uh, of last sure. week. So, you know, uh, we had been praying, you know, fervently on several different things for uh, at least several weeks leading up to the conference. And then the conference experience was just amazing. Um, and, you know, the thing was, is we'd never been to something like that. And uh, when we got done with it, we had a lot to reflect on. And so, you know, a few weeks went by and we basically were just praying fervently uh, in some very deep studies, asking others, you know, to pray for us. And uh, I just really felt strongly about some of these things that I had been studying and learning. And uh, I was praying about an opportunity, you know, how could I share some of these things uh, with the congregation, uh, was hoping to, if the opportunity, you know, came up to talk with the leadership first. 
and uh, see if there was some opportunity to do some studying. And uh, because I certainly wouldn't just, you know, dive into it with the church and and not having talked with the leadership. Um, so that's kind of how that went. You know, those couple of weeks just went by really fast. Uh, but to be honest with you, I can say I probably haven't prayed as fervently, you know, maybe most of my Christian life uh, as as after the conference was over. So. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, like when you had the conference, and then you, I guess you had some sort of uh, call on uh, last week from, yeah. I guess it was the elders. Maybe you can go into explaining yeah. how that kind of transitioned into where we are today. Sure. So um, I got a message uh, from one of the elders uh, Friday morning, about eight o'clock, uh, that said basically all of the elders uh, will be meeting with you in an hour at the church building. So, you know, that was uh, a very unusual message because I had been preaching at this congregation for about just over seven years. And, uh, you know, you, you have messages back and forth between you and your leadership all the time. And, and a lot of times text messages just real quick and easy. But I was just kind of surprised to get a, you know, get a text message about something that important. And so uh, I just had a bad feeling about it, you know, because it was very out of the ordinary. And so I called one of the elders to talk to the talk to him about it. And I said, you know, I, I don't have a good feeling about this. And uh, I said, this kind of feels like an ambush to me. And I said, I'll meet with you guys, but I'm not going to meet with you uh, on such, you know, short, sudden notice like this, unless you clue me in on, you know, what's the topic, you know, what's the issue we're meeting about. And so I was told basically, well, you know, hold on for a few minutes. Um, and I got a call back and basically I was told, well, all of us are going to be at the building at nine o'clock and, uh, it's your, you know, your choice if you come or not. So I said, so this is an ambush. And the person I spoke to said, yes, this is an ambush. And that just, that comment just really floored me because as, as the butterflies were in my stomach and my stomach started, you know, just kind of churning and my heart was racing. I kind of just got this, you know, like adrenaline pump, you know, uh, I had to just stop for a minute, take a few breaths. And, uh, uh, my wife had just left for work, you know, that morning about 10 minutes before this, uh, text and phone call came in. And so naturally I called my best friend, you know, and wife of 26 years. And I said, Hey, uh, I don't want to, you know, upset you, but I just got this text and then this phone call and I told her what happened. And, uh, she says, well, I'm turning the car around and she says, I will meet you at the church building. I'll meet you in the parking lot. Uh, I told her, I said, my fear was my gut feeling was, you know, you don't call a meeting like this sudden notice, you know, and, and everybody's going to be there, you know, uh, unless you're either going to fire somebody or there's some kind of major problem. And so, I said a prayer and, and that calmed me down. I said, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm overreacting, you know, cause you get that adrenaline rush and you're not thinking clearly. Right. So I calmed down for a few minutes. I had, you know, about a half hour before I needed to be at the building. So I just kind of tried to relax and, uh, my wife was on her way back. So just kind of prayed about it, thought about it. And I came to the conclusion at that time that, you know, I'm, I probably am overreacting. I mean, obviously this is a serious deal, but uh, once I get to the building, find out what it is, we can talk about it. And, you know, I figured that there was a chance it would have something to do with the conference, but here's the thing. Uh, we didn't tell anyone we were going to the conference. You know, uh, we were kind of just killing two birds with one stone because we had needed a vacation, the two of us and summer was busy and back to school was kind of crazy. And, uh, so we had decided to take a vacation and my wife kind of just stumbled across this uh, advertisement for the take on the world 18 conference. And she says, man, this thing is only a little over an hour away from us. And, uh, since we had been investigating and studying things for, you know, almost a year and a half, we decided, well, let's go to this thing. It, it'd be kind of like a vacation, you know, at the retreat center, as you know, uh, on the lake and it was very reasonably priced and we thought you know we're just going to go and we're going to see what it's about and pray about it 
And uh, so, you know, I thought, well, maybe, maybe that's what it's about, you know, uh, because I recognize that some of the topics and things that were discussed there, you know, they're out of the mainstream. And, and so certainly I figured, okay, maybe that's it. But I kept thinking, I don't know how somebody would even know because, uh, you know, we didn't even tell our kids we were going to a specific conference. We just said, we're going to be in the, you know, Sandusky area off and on through the weekend and, you know, love you. And we're going to enjoy this time together. So, you know, honestly, I really believe, uh, there was a, you know, some gossip or something, you know, somebody was stalking us basically, which I think is unfortunate, but, uh, there must've been some gossip that ensued as a result of that. And it, and it got back to the leadership. So, um, Going back uh, to where we started, I got to the church building, you know, a few minutes before nine o'clock, my, my wife pulled in, you know, we just kind of looked at each other and she gave me a kiss and a quick hug. And she uh, decided that she would go sit uh, in another room and just pray. And, you know, that gave me a lot of comfort. Um, so uh, the elders were outside and we walked in, uh, you know, to the conference room and, and kind of, you know, sat down and. I was pretty nervous, you know, because I thought it's, this is kind of an unfair advantage. I, I kind of felt like I was being, you know, ganged up on. Um, and I didn't know for sure what the topic was, but, uh, one of the elders asked, uh, someone in the room to say a prayer. So, you know, that kind of just calmed me down. You know, I thought, okay, we're starting this meeting with the prayer. That is a good sign, you know? So I kind of just took a breath and chilled out for a moment. And then it was just after that prayer, things kind of just went south. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I could certainly understand concern, but uh, it was a very strict business meeting. It was not friendly. Uh, it was very, you know, terse. And basically the meeting started out as it's been brought to our attention that you attended the Take on the World 18 conference in Vermilion, Ohio, you know, on August 24th through the 26th. And, uh, you know, I felt like, did I commit a crime? You know, like all I said was very calmly, yes, that's correct. And I did so on my personal vacation, which is part of my benefit of being at the church. And uh, we used our own funds. We didn't spend a penny of the church's money. You know, we used our own car. Um, and so I was kind of frustrated, you know, and then uh, one of the elders said, well, you know, we've been on the website, we've seen the videos and, uh, we cannot have a minister that has that kind of association. And, you know, this is Friday morning, uh, preparing to preach a, another lesson Sunday morning. And I was told we can't have you in our pulpit. And that kind of just shocked me, you know, um, first of all, just from the start of the messages and leading up to the meeting, um, it was not friendly. It was not loving. It was not, you know, it didn't feel like a, a very good situation. And so, uh, you know, I was told that, uh, that again, that kind of association, we just can't handle that, you know, and we can't let you in our pulpit. And so, I said, well, let me ask you guys a question. I said, I've been here almost seven and a half years. When have I ever uh, misspoke the truth, you know, done something, you know, heinous, uh, you know, caused some unnecessary drama? I said, you know, I've preached and, and I've taught. And, uh, you know, when have I, you know, uh, taught falsehood or something? And uh, they just would not answer me. And. I knew they, they wouldn't be able to answer that because the only answer they could give was you've never done that. But basically what I was told was it's irrelevant because you know, you're fired and none of the rest of this stuff really matters. So I was kind of floored that, um, they never asked me, Nate, what are your beliefs? They never asked me, okay, you know, you go to this conference and there's all kinds of different speakers and, and tracks for, you know, different breakout sessions. Uh, most of the stuff there we couldn't even possibly go to because there's so many different things, you know, you have to pick a track or two and, you know, you might catch most of the, you know, keynotes at night, but, uh, we probably were only able to actually go to about 20% of what was going on. So I was just floored 
that they wouldn't, uh, you know, ask any clarification or, you know, where are you at with this? Why did you go to this? You know, what's your thinking? Uh, where are you at with this? In fact, uh, it really hurt me that this decision was already made before they called me. I was fired and that was just going to be it. And they had drafted up a little one page, you know, letter, just kind of outlining what they, uh, basically informing me, here's the deal, you know? And so it was apparent, um, that this was not going to be anything reversible whatsoever. But, you know, if, if, if you think that I'm a dangerous person, <laughs> when I've proven otherwise for seven and a half years, give me the benefit of the doubt. You know, if, if you need to fire me at some point, then fire me, but don't fire me before you've even asked me a question or, or given any clarification. It's so it's absolutely startling that uh, yeah. we're at a case in point when this is happening, not just to uh, members of churches, but also, you know, in the ministry without any excuse. I mean, where, where yeah. was the sin, right? Usually it's, yeah. uh, you know, you're caught in sin and you're unrepentive and all these sort of things. But now we're dealing with a situation where they're like, look, these associations or, you know, like you had mentioned with the take on the world, you had really looked a lot into the cosmology track there, getting into yeah. biblical cosmology and a lot of the presentations that were done by myself and Rob Skiba and many other great people like Chad Taylor. You did an yeah. interview with him last night. And, um, you know, this is the type of topics that it seems that are scaring so many people away from the church. I mean, like I said, personally, yeah. with my with my story, uh, my family, you know, we've been kicked out of two churches. And I went uh, and told the story at the beginning of the Flat Earth International Conference Canada. I, mm. I It was the first time. And I mean, I was sitting on this for two years. And then finally, you know, I had to bring out this story. It was the time God, yeah. this was the right time because I didn't want it to be angry. And I know this broadcast is not going to be about being angry or getting personal with certain individuals. It's about the principle, Pastor, right? Yes. And that's exactly why I brought you on is because we're dealing with the principle of the word of God. This is what the word of God says. And yet people are not even wanting to have that debate or that discussion. They're just saying, leave. So yeah, yeah it's, it's startling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, this is how... I would have hoped, and this is how I, I would have expected it to go. Even if you're fearful, concerned, you know, weirded out, whatever it is, um, based on the fact, like you said, I hadn't committed any sins. I hadn't actually done anything wrong. I simply went to a conference that I paid for with my own money. We didn't advertise it, you know, so um, if it wasn't for somebody, you know, basically stalking us on our vacation, that would never even have come up until if the conversation, um, you know, if there had been some open mindedness, mindedness, then we could have spoken about it. And my only desire was really to find a way to open up the discussion, you know, hopefully, you know, in a few more weeks time, because I had really been praying fervently about that, Lord, you know, what do you want me to do here? Do you want me to try to broach it with the leadership and see if they're, you know, open enough to at least study it because that's all I would have asked for was, you know, I would have explained, here's what happened to me. We've been studying, you know, various topics for almost a year and a half. And uh, we went to this conference and, you know, things are kind of coming to a head in our minds as far as, you know, certain things, if we're convicted on it, then if I'm convicted on something from the word and I believe it's true. And if, you know, if I'm a minister of the word of God and my responsibility is to teach truth, then I have a heart for the congregation and the leadership there to know. And uh, there would have been absolutely no harm in taking a few weeks or a few months time to pray together as a leadership um, to, you know, dive into the word. And, uh, you know, anybody who's heard me preach or been in my classes, um, they know that I will give scriptural references for what I'm saying. And so that's why the whole situation um, just really was shocking to me. And uh, I wish that it had been handled a different way. Uh, but the events of those circumstances have seemed to confirm some things to me that I was praying about. And uh, although I was very hurt at first and just kind of taken off guard uh, over the last couple of days, it just it seemed like God was really directing us and uh giving us peace about the situation. And so, as you said, you know, um, I don't have any ill will towards uh, the leadership and certainly the congregation. I just uh, wish that it had been handled differently, you know. And sadly, 
I couldn't have done anything in the situation because everything was just dictated to me. Um, and so basically, you were like, like you said yeah. in the beginning, I mean, you basically were ambushed, yeah. especially yes. when you get a call and you have an hour to prep. It's like, we want to see you in an hour. Those conversations never go well. I mean, that was kind of the yeah. same conversation I got with my pastor when he's like, hey, we got to have a meeting. And the two meetings that we had before that, it was always just him. Now, when I got there, there was another person sitting there, another elder. I'm like, okay, here we go, right? So yeah. you always yeah. know when the elders, you know, want to have you in for a meeting, whether, you know, you're just a lay person or a member, um, but especially as a pastor, when all of a sudden there's yeah. some, um, you know, meeting that you're not even aware of. And I think some of the people, you know, on the board uh, of uh, elders were even like your friends like close friends yeah i mean uh to be honest with you you know you're always going to have disagreements in leadership especially in this day and age in churches you know I, I think the for most churches nationally you know the average stay for a minister is is sadly it's only a couple years you know at every congregation because of conflict and different things but uh you would like to you know you, you would hope that you have a decent relationship and, and i have to say that for most of the time that I was with this congregation, most of it was good, you know, and uh, I considered uh, most, if not all of the elders, you know, a friends, some may be closer than others, but that's natural. You know, you got five or six or seven elders. Um, some of them, you know, two or three of them, you're going to feel closer to and others you're just kind of on friendly terms with, but you don't necessarily, you know, have a, a very close relationship. So, and, and in fact, you know, we'd had a couple of, you know, frustrating moments a year and a half, two years ago with some different things. There was a lot of stuff happening at church that was just, you know, emotional stuff. And, uh, but we had several months ago, we'd kind of cleared the air on that, you know, and we're working well together. And, uh, we had, uh, a new associate minister that came on board with us last year and that was exciting and things were upbeat. And so, you know, I honestly, uh, was surprised by just how how the communication was handled and how I was handled as an individual, you know. Um, so what ended up happening was is uh, I basically said, okay, can I have a couple hours to clear up my office? Uh, they were going to give me a couple of days, you know, to clear out the office, but I, I was just so upset about it and so hurt. I said, you know, my wife is here. We have two cars we're going to spend the next hour, two hours, whatever it takes to make sure I have all of my personal belongings out of the building. And then I told the elders, I said, you know, I'll turn in whatever keys we have. I'll turn in the, you know, church credit card, whatever other items belong to the church. And so that two hours uh, time was, was very uh, tough. You know, I mean, you're sitting there and you're packing up your books and you're, it's, it wasn't even really sinking in on the one hand, but on the other hand, I felt like I didn't have any other way to think about this after being in prayer so fervently for weeks. It was like, you know, God was answering the prayer, even though this was a terrible situation. And I think it was clearly mishandled, uh, at least from a communication and from, you know, how you treat me, you know, after seven years that uh, if you need to fire somebody, if you feel like you need to fire somebody, even if you feel like, you know, they're going to teach something false or cause a problem, you don't have to te treat someone that way to fire them. I, I could have been just as fired, <laughs> you know, which was on the spot, but I could have left there feeling like I was treated, you know, with respect and, uh, and treated that I was, you know, treated with love and I didn't feel those. And that was the part that really hurt. So, you know, once we got the office cleared out, you know, uh, the next uh, couple hours were just kind of surreal. You know, the kids were in school and my wife and I went back to the house and, you know, I got this garage, you know, stacked full of books and files and, you know, just stuff preachers have in their offices, you know, 20 years of 20 plus years of ministry, you know, kind of encapsulated in a garage, you know, look like I was getting ready to have a, you know, book sale or something. So, yeah, you know, it was a stressful morning, but uh, it only took a few hours for the, you know, the story to really change. And uh, I just had a piece that came over me. I can't explain it. You know, I, I have to say it must have been from the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get into a little bit of that, uh, you know, stuff that alerted them or scared them off. Because, again, yeah. we're seeing a lot of people say that... Uh, 
you know, this is unbiblical when it comes into, you know, flat earth or cosmology when it's taught in the Bible. And, um, you know, maybe you can go into your story, like how you actually even came to looking into uh, flat earth, you know, as a pastor, yeah. it's a, it would be an interesting story for people to hear exactly, you know, in your journey, what, w what led you to even looking into creation in that manner? Yeah, I think that's important, you know, to give people some context, um, because I didn't go looking for this subject. Uh, the subject of, you know, it's known as flat earth or biblical earth or biblical cosmology. Uh, I was about a year and a half ago. Uh, I was preparing to do uh, a teaching for a, a congregation uh, north of us that was having a summer series on apologetics and some different subjects. And they had asked me to come on a Wednesday night uh, for an hour and do some teaching on the flood. And so, you know, was this flood, uh, you know, worldwide? Was it local? You know, what was going on? Uh, and so I had done some serious study about that. And I was excited that that topic was assigned to me because I really wanted to dive into that. So I put, uh, you know, my study together in my PowerPoint and I had a, you know, couple of months before I needed to deliver the lesson. And so I was on YouTube one day, you know, watching some Bible videos and I decided, you know, I'm going to check out a couple of videos and see if they have anything on uh, the flood. And so I watched a, a video or two on the flood and you know how YouTube, you know, does, if you watch a video, there's, you know, you start getting recommendations for something, you know, similar. And I looked on the right and I saw a couple of things that caught my eye. Uh, there was one or two videos that said something about flat earth in the title. And then there was this uh, video that had an interesting icon. Uh, it was the global eye, celebrate truth, you know? And so I think the first video I watched, if I remember right, was the global eye. And it just like blew me away, you know? And I'm like, well, at first I was thinking, nah, you know, what, is this for real, you know? And it was just uh, the topic, but also just the video was so well done and, and how it was handled was very professional and, and articulate. I thought, you know, that was kind of weird. And then I thought, well, what's this other deal on flat earth? And if I remember right, I think it was either uh, Leisure X had like a two hour and 20 something minute video and it just had this interesting thumbnail picture. It's like, okay, what's that? It looks like a flat earth with a dome over it. You know, what's this all about? And uh, so, you know, picture this, uh, after a couple hours into this rabbit hole, uh, I wasn't thinking about the flood. I didn't, I probably wasn't even thinking about what day it was. I was just like, after a couple, two, three hours in with two videos, I was like, wow, uh, there, there's something about this that I need to at least check out further. And uh, I stumbled onto uh, Mark Sargent's Flat Earth Clues and... Uh, that really kind of sucked me into saying, you know, there's enough here that if I'm, if I'm being a diligent, you know, student and teacher of the word, then I need to at least give this some thought because I'd never even heard of flat earth or biblical cosmology, whatever. And, uh, so for the next several days, you know, an hour or two in the afternoon, when I'd be off work and the kids would be at school. I'd, uh, go and find another video. And I probably watched those, the videos that I shared with you, I probably watched them a couple times each, you know, cause you know, you watch a two hour video, you're like, all right, you know, I got to go back and do this again. But, uh, several weeks went by of off and on kind of popping in on that when I had free time. And, and then I started getting into, you know, some of the stuff that Rob Skiba had. And, and so it just kind of snowballed to, you know, this is something that's going to take some time to really investigate. Because as you're well aware, you, you really have a couple of different kinds of videos. You have those that are, are looking more so at the biblical, you know, scripture and, you know, historical accounts and things. And then you have the others that might be a little bit more on the scientific approach. And then you have some that are kind of a mixture of everything. And so, you know, spent considerable time over a, a couple of months really diving into it, especially, you know, being a minister uh, I gravitated mostly towards the ones that seem to have some Bible attached to it. Uh, but there was also some very good ones that were just scientific based or, uh, that were exposing, 
um, what you know modern accepted science, you know pseudoscience, uh, scientism, as as you have well put. Um, and so it was it was a lot of uh, you know thinking, and I started praying about it. And after a couple of months, I became pretty convinced, at least on uh, the biblical cosmology side of it, that what modern science has has told us. And every what I learned as a kid, you know, the heliocentric model and, you know, all that sort of thing, that uh, that's not actually what the Bible says. And so, you know, for about uh, another year and a month or two plus after that, uh, off and on, been in study and prayer about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And after that first several weeks, you know, backing up after that first several weeks, I started sharing some stuff with my wife because... She's watching me watch these videos and probably had, you know, uh, a wrinkled look on my eyebrows. Like she could tell I was just very intense. She's like, what are you, what are you into there? You know? <laughs> and of course, what am I supposed to tell my wife? Like, oh, it's just flat earth, honey. You know? Uh, she's like, what? You know? So I kind of just broached it to her. And so she started kind of saying, you know, what, what is that? Like, is that a real thing? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've watched hours. And I said, uh, you got to at least check into this. So she watched a couple of videos and started thinking, whoa, you know, um, I need to maybe kind of get up to speed, like with where my husband's at, because he's obviously a little farther down the road than me on this. And so she kind of started doing her own investigation. And pretty soon uh, my kids, you know, they're asking questions and overhearing conversations between me and my wife. And at first, all of them were kind of like, what, you know? But my kids are all very well-adjusted, intelligent kids. You know, they're investigative, they're inquisitive. And uh, at different times, you know, they each kind of did some of their own study. And, you know, teenagers and young adults, they're way more savvy than, you know, 45-year-old guy mm -hmm. cruising, the, you know, cruising the web and, and social media. And so they were able to navigate stuff pretty quick. Um, so that kind of gives you the background of, you know, I've been studying this topic and various topics for about a year and a half. So back to the, you know, just real quick, back to the firing. Um, if I wanted to teach something that was going to cause a problem, like if I was just going to try to surprise the congregation, you know, hijack the pulpit or surprise the elders and, uh, you know, not talk to them, I had ample opportunity because I've actually be, been convinced on, you know, biblical earth flat earth, whatever you want to call it, uh, actually been convinced on that topic for at least a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the big issue was, well, you went to this conference, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and uh, we can't have you, we can't have a minister that's associated with, you know, they didn't say this term, but you could tell like, that's really weird out of, you know, it's, it's out of bounds stuff, you know, and we can't have you in our pulpit. And I'm thinking, you know what, I've been in your pulpit for over a year with these views in place. And so if I was a bad guy, if I had wrong intentions, if I was going to mishandle it, it, it would have happened months earlier. Well, so yeah, that's the, yeah, you, you know, didn't, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, you didn't yeah. even like talk about this, preach about this, you know, do anything. And yet they still were, you know, at yeah. the point of, you know, saying, we got to let you go. Like what I find really startling about uh, you know your testimony is yeah. they didn't even want to engage in discussion like do you believe this um no. why do you believe this you know make us understand it was just you know run for the hills and let's just get yeah. rid of this and I, i'm seeing this more and more i get a lot of emails from people that are broken um this is happening on a wide scale pastor um, many people are being affected by this topic and so, so far what i've seen is the church doesn't want to deal with it they just want to basically get it out so they don't have to deal with it but what's going on is there's a big remnant of people that are basically growing that are learning what the bible has to say that they are taking a stand and saying look we are going to stand on the literal word of god when it comes to creation Yes. And it's unbelievable to me that a lot of churches that are even six-day literal creationists, they're the ones that are most opposed to this. You know, think, sure. wait a minute, where are we taking allegory and poetry? And I've had so many discussions when it comes to even Joshua 10, you know, because most people, most churches will say, well, that's historic. 
Okay. Yeah. But they'll still discount the fact that the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon, you know, were commanded to stop. And they'll say, well, yeah. it was just their perception. They have all these excuses. And I don't know yeah. what is going on right now where, you know, I mean, 15, 20 years ago, it was always, always about standing on the literal word of God, you know, stand on the word of God strong yes. and take it literal. And now it seems like there's this transition where it's like, go allegory, poetry, poetic, do anything, yeah. but being literal. Yeah. And, and there are, there are those items in scripture and I know you're well aware of that, but everything becomes reduced to that. And, you know, my 14 year old daughter was able uh, to have a thought about this the other night. She heard me, I was reading some scripture out loud to whoever was in the room with us and she was also there. And I read one section of scripture that, you know, had words like, like, and as, and, you know, similes and things like that. And then I was reading another scripture from Genesis that was just declarative. It was just a factual uh, account. This is what happened. God said this, God did this, and this was why he did this. And I didn't think my daughter was listening because she, you know, she was watching her iPod, uh, iPod like most teenagers are and her head popped up and she goes, you know what? I don't understand. She's like, why do people have such a hard time with uh, the literal portions? Because she says the Bible basically tells you, it clues you in when it's being literal and when it's, you know, like, okay, a metaphor, simile. But Robbie, you know, as well, that even those that are metaphor and simile or even parables or whatnot, those things still speak forth a truth. They're illustrative, but they're illustrative of an underlying truth, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But, but when you look at, especially like Genesis, and you mentioned Joshua and these different things, but Genesis 1, I've just, I've read that hundreds of times. But as I come back to it and really tried to say, you know, let's peel, let's peel the layers of, you know, what science has said, you know, modern science, pseudoscience, whatever you want to call it, scientism. Um, and if you're just looking at what the word actually says, it blows your mind away, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it's, it, it's a problem. And, and I understand, uh, sometimes we're just fearful, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think that, I don't think that the motives of, of my leaders were, were bad. You know, I don't think I do, do I believe that, um, they were being genuine as far as they thought, well, this is something we need to protect. Absolutely. But I think there was some serious cognitive dissonance going on at first. I think um, this is not the kind of topic that you just go to a website, watch a couple videos when you haven't actually dove into the word. And, you know, I've, I've been in ministry for 24 years. I have a, uh, a Bachelor of Arts in Bible. And a few years ago, I completed, completed a Master of Ministry. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Smart. I'm just saying that I've spent, you know, more than half of my life studying the word. Mm -hmm. And it took someone like me at least a couple of months to start to become pretty convinced. And then it took a whole another year plus of diligent study and prayer before basically the, the scales, you know, were removed from my eyes, the, the indoctrination, you know, that you get, and you know, in some situations in public school and, you know, NASA and, and, you know, scientists and white lab coats, you know, what they say goes. And I'm saying, you know what, what they're telling me and what I've always been taught and what I always believed, you know, I was a huge sci-fi geek my whole life. You know, I didn't go to like conventions or nothing, but I watched, you know, Star Wars when, when I was four years old, Star Wars, the first one came out and I remember watching it in theater, you know, mm -hmm. Star Trek, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I've always been along with the mainstream on that. But uh, once I started becoming open to the fact that the scriptures are telling me something different, and it's always been there, I just didn't see it. Um, so you, you can't take this topic lightly. You can't just say, watch a few videos, and this is, you know, heresy or whatever. Um, and, you know, the other thing that, that kind of hurts is that, you know, the sermon that day was a good sermon. It was a sermon that spoke to the importance of truth and being very cautious of error and falsehood. Probably all the scriptures and all the everything that was said was 100 percent accurate. But, you know, what is the congregation to think when, you know, and I realize in a firing situation, you can't give a lot of details, but mm -hmm. you hear you hear a sermon like that 
and probably a very good sermon. And then right after that, it's announced that, well, we're firing the preacher. We're going in a different direction, right? So what does the average church member think about? They're processing that and the light bulbs coming on in their head because they're thinking the message I'm getting is that the minister was teaching false doctrine. Sure. And exactly. Um, how do you, how do you uh, deal with that? Because I mean, there might yeah. be some people from, um, you know, the church that are yeah. watching tonight and, um, you know, it might be good to go on the record and maybe talk about uh, that yeah. because they probably are, are confused, curious. Yeah. Maybe they're looking into this issue a little bit more, but again, they maybe yeah. are, are, um, you know, the falsehood of saying that, uh, yeah. you know, you're teaching lies when all of a sudden, you haven't even taught anything yet. Yes, you believe this. You've come to that understanding. God's sure. got you to this place. But you haven't taught anyone this from the pulpit, in Bible yeah. studies. And that's what's so alarming. And you would think that, and I'm sure you're going to have people reaching out to you from your church that, you know, yeah. um, you know, obviously for support, but also just wanting to know more. And I think this is a great ministering uh, opportunity for you uh, when it comes yeah. to this topic. But maybe you can talk a little bit about kind of where you see things going with, yeah. with, you know, active members and people that, you know, you've got to know very closely in, you know, over seven years as active you know pastor at the church yeah yeah uh you know as i said uh, you know and, and I'm, I'm not trying to sound negative or harsh but you know um i was hurt you know and i just felt like it was a overreaction a knee-jerk reaction and uh i i just wish that uh you know i had been asked to you know do some clarification and as you said uh I had been studying this for a year and a half. Uh, I had never posted anything on like my normal social media and all that stuff about it. I'd never taught any lessons from the pulpit on the subject. I had never taught a class on the subject. And we didn't even, even though my wife and I and our kids were involved in this, but mainly my wife and I studying this diligently, we never had any clandestine, you know, meetings at our home. Um, where it was like, okay, we're going to start an underground Bible study, you know, and broach these subjects. Because as I said to you before, I, I would have, and my plan was in prayer to approach the leadership first and also include our fellow minister, you know, my associate minister. Um, and so that's the part that I thought was so unfair was, you know, if I was going to teach falsehood, it would have happened a long time ago. And, you know, um, protect the church. Sure, you have a responsibility as shepherds to make sure that error doesn't creep into the church. But uh, usually people are fired for teaching error or doing something that's unprofessional. And uh, I had started that Discerning Dad 73 uh, YouTube account, but you know it wasn't using my name. It didn't have Wolf or Nate or anything in it. And uh, I had posted a couple of videos on subjects about angels, giants, you know, the Nephilim, mm -hmm. things, mostly things like that, just five or six of those types of videos. And, uh, you know, that had been created about six months ago. But, you know, I had 14 to 17 followers there for six months. So uh, it wasn't like uh, that was going to affect anybody or even anybody from the church would even know about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that that's just the part that I thought was really unfair was uh, if I had been there for six or seven months and you just said, oh, we don't really know this guy. You know, we got to we got to get rid of him. But um, it was just how it was handled was the biggest problem for me. And and also then you said, like, where like where do I see myself moving forward? Well, I mean, your... I, want, I mean, we were going to get into that a little bit more where you see, you know, God yeah. opening a new door, where you're going to go in ministry. But I was going to ask, you know, yeah. as far as uh, people right now, because this is really new and fresh as far as, you know, being fired just on yes. Friday. I mean, we're talking, yeah. what, like three yeah. days ago, four days yeah. ago? I mean, what are we, Monday? Um, yeah. So this is really, really fresh. So I was thinking more uh, about, like, the uh, members of the church yes. um, yeah. in kind of talking to them, maybe explaining, going to detail kind of your journey. I mean, obviously you've gone into detail about what, what transpired, what happened with the elders. Yeah. But, you know, maybe you could kind of talk about what's your plan when people say, hey, Pastor Nate, like, can you tell me yeah. a little bit more about this? I'm curious. I'm interested. Like, what's sure. your plan there because i'm sure there is going to be some curiosity but also you know are they going to be looking at 
you like you're a false teacher. Again, you don't really yeah. have anything at this point. Um, now, they can look into this yeah. topic all they want and believe it's false or not. But reality sets in when it's like this is the literal word of God when it comes to creation. What do we do with these verses? So you yeah. know, for you, what, what exactly is your plan with your local congregation that, you know, were basically your family, you were shepherding them up yeah. until, you know, a few days ago? Yeah. And, you know, um, with those long term relationships, everybody in a situation like this reacts differently. Some people are very confused. Some people become angry and they really might not even know why they might become angry over something that they don't really have, have the facts about or understand. Some people just become very emotional, you know, and uh I appreciate there there have been several people from the church that reached out to us. Most of them were by phone, text message, phone call. But there were a few people, you know, that said, we'd like to meet with you in person. And so I said, we'll come over to the house. And, you know, we kind of shared with them basically these details. Um, and uh, so as far as teaching them, uh, the people that have already reached out to me, I said, you know, research this for yourself. Uh, but I told them, I said, you got to pray about it. You got to pray consistently about it. This isn't just, you know, I said a prayer for two minutes. I had a, you know, cracked open the word for 20 minutes and I was convinced, you know, no, you, you've got to be diligent, you know, study to show yourself approved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, fervent in prayer, you know, pray without ceasing. Uh, you know, praying without ceasing is not just when you're in a jam and you're like, oh man, you know, uh, this month, terrible things have happened, and so I'm going to pray without ceasing. No, I think we should pray without ceasing when we're in diligent studies of the Word. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I would basically uh, share with people, and and my advice would be, first and foremost, uh, get into the Word, get in prayer, and then uh, you know there are some really good books out there, you know, uh, that are approaching this subject. Um, you know, I would probably recommend, you know, Chad Taylor's book for a lot of folks, you know, where are we, you know, earth according to the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, because I mean, this book, this book right here has a lot of uh, scripture in it. It has four different translations in it. It has some, you know, some footnotes, some definitions, some diagrams. Um, but also I would say you need to watch some YouTube videos and people knock YouTube videos, but you know, that's just a platform. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see very professionally well done things on YouTube. You can see corny, stupid stuff that gets, you know, 17 million views and, you know, it's just nonsense. Uh, but I would say research flat earth, biblical cosmology, you know, whichever term you want to look at. Um, and you're going to need to invest several hours of your time watching more than one video. And, you know, there's videos out there that are saying, oh, flat earth is stupid and it's wrong and we've debunked it. So you're going to come across videos that are for it, and you're going to come across videos that are against it. What we have to do in our hearts and minds is say, I'm seeking only the truth of the word of God here. I'm not seeking to please man. I'm not seeking, you know, I'm seeking to please God. And so that will help you sift through mm -hmm. and uh, get down to, uh, eventually you get down to the word. Because a lot of these videos and, and these resources like Chad's book, um, they will give you scripture references that then you can go to in your own Bible and look it up. Mm -hmm. And then once you've looked it up, you know, take some notes. I mean, I kept notepads. I'm kind of old school, you know, mm -hmm. I kept just notepads of things. And uh, I continued to pray about those things. And I had to go back to stuff many, many times. In fact, even though I was convinced on this topic, uh, it wasn't until the conference and the last few weeks that all of a sudden some things really gelled in my mind, and particularly um, Genesis chapter 1 and the first verse of Genesis chapter 2. I mean, those things right there to me are enough to say, wow, I got some real study to do. So that's what I would encourage people to do. Pray, study, um, seek wise counsel. You know, uh, Proverbs says that with many counselors, plans succeed. So, um if I can be one of those counselors, I'm happy to do that, you know, because I've been on this journey. Uh, but if people are not going to be willing to even look into it, that's close, close mindedness. You know, uh, the scriptures are clear that, you know, it is folly. You know, it is foolish for somebody to basically uh, make a judgment 
without searching into it, you know, coming up with an answer before you've investigated it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're not called to be fools or, you know, have folly. We're, we're called to, uh, test the spirits and search out the scriptures. So I'm hoping that I'll have some opportunity with that as far as the congregation. But I recognize that in a situation like this, uh, a lot of people that even have been your close friends because they have, you know, family ties within the church, mm -hmm. um, that's their home. They've been here for decades. You know, you were just the hired guy. So even though they befriended you, it's kind of a weird psychological situation that happens where, um, you know, you're gone, but they're, they're still there. You know, that's their home and their hometown, and their home church. Uh, and this, so there's, you know, there's conflicts, there's emotional conflicts in people's minds. But uh, I would encourage someone in the church that I was fired from, that I worked at for seven years, that you, you know me as a person. You know my track record in the pulpit, in the classroom. You know I'm approachable. You know, I'm not going to force anything on you. If you, the best thing is to talk to me and my wife directly. We'll sit down with you. Um, but beyond that, I, I really think that uh, the greater opportunity here uh, long term is going to be uh, with this message getting out of, addre of addressing and exposing the way things are handled. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the bigger issue here. Uh, this, thing is, this thing is bigger than Nate got fired. This thing is bigger than such and such church in Ohio. This thing is happening to many ministers, many Christian individuals, like you said yourself, shared that story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you said something to me the other day when we were talking, and not just you, but other speakers, you know, Dean Odell and Rob Skiba and other people have said uh, several ministers who got fired, you know, have contacted me. Mm -hmm. And you message them, you try to encourage them, and they kind of just fade away. They just kind of disappear because they have such, uh, they've been hurt, number one. They've been mishandled. And then they're afraid. They're afraid that, uh, you know, I can't speak out about this because I got fired. So then maybe they just look for another church, but they never uh, they never address the, su the, the topic of uh, what they were convicted on. And so People say, well, I got to have uh, a way to feed my family, so I'm just going to look for another church, and I'm just going to keep my mouth mm -hmm. shut. You know, that's the absolute wrong thing to do. That's what's going on. I mean, I, I've yeah. got lots of, over a dozen emails of yeah. people in the ministry, from youth pastors to senior pastors. And and again, what, what makes it so extraordinary uh, for me is, you know, you are the first pastor to go public based on a story such as this but then also going forward where god has you you know moving in the future that i think that's what's so exciting and i think that's why you get so much support um, not just with the community but with you know like you said yep. dean odell and rob skiba and myself and chad taylor and many many others <laughs> nathan roberts um yep. why we're really excited about this is because someone like you coming forward like this really gives a lot of other people courage, right? It gives a lot of people hope that maybe are suffering in silence. I mean, there is a lot of abuse, be, you know, taking place. And mm -hmm. me, I've been literally called to the church to work, to minister. And I know that you have the same type of heart, you know, and that you want to minister to other pastors, other people in ministry. And maybe you can kind of touch on that because yeah. you know, before we get into more about like flat earth, I think it's really important to address kind of the heart, the calling that you have, but also understand that we're talking, I mean, these are only the people that reach out to me or Rob Skeever, Dean Odell. Yes. There's a lot yes. of people that aren't even reaching yeah. out with like big, long, lengthy emails. So again, the yeah. question is how many? I mean, we had an entire family over for dinner of seven that got booted out of their church of like seven, eight years. I mean, they were asked yeah. to leave. They don't have a YouTube channel. They don't, you know, yeah. don't have a voice, uh, you know, but again, they were active on social media. And again, one thing led to the next. Um, myself yeah. personally, I believe that it's important that we address this in love respectfully, mm -hmm. but we need to address yeah. this. This is based on principle. And myself, I had mentioned my story at the conference in Canada, but I said, that's only phase one. And I mentioned these two churches by name. I mentioned the two pastors by name. And I said, look, I'm not angry. This is just based on principle. One, yeah. of, the, one of the pastors, you know, I asked him six, I think seven times, you know, Amos nine, six. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, get, mm -hmm. I'll get to you. I'll let you know what that means because in that church that I was at, the translation they use is the NASB, which is vaulted yeah. dome. 
I mean, it's a yeah. double whammy, right? So when I yeah. took his own, when I took his own Bible, opened it up, and he read it for himself, I mean, he was kind of startled. You know, what what do I yeah. say? And I think yeah. that we need to address this. This is the the Bible, the Word of God, and why I'm so encouraged, and why I'm prayerful and encouraging and supportive of just everything that you're going to be doing is because we were really praying for someone to come forward to basically tell their story to say, hey, wow. I'm here, reach out to me. There is going to be a lot of pastors, I believe, once this you know, gets out there and yeah. you do more interviews with Nathan Roberts and you did with Chad Taylor and other great people will have you on their shows. And again, as this news spreads and you get more well-known, I think a lot of more a lot more people in ministry are going to reach out to you. And maybe you can kind of touch on what you talked to me yeah. yesterday or the yeah. day before about where you think God's leading you to, not just to be bold when it comes to you know, the Bible, creation, uh, the flat earth, um, but also, you know, what you're going to be doing ministry wise when it comes to sure. other people. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I had mentioned to you that, uh, you know, as I shared with your, your audience here, that I had initially stumbled on this topic about a year and a half ago. It was like a, a year ago, March or April. I can't remember. It was early spring. And, uh, about several months before that, um, I had, uh, been thinking about a ministry idea because by that time I'd, I'd, you know, still I'd been in paid or volunteer ministry for over 20 years. And I just felt burdened for ministers that, um, basically suffered in silence, you know, not on the flat earth topic or anything like this, just ministers that sometimes, uh, and, and you know, let's just say there are bad ministers out there, sure. right? Sure. So there are some ministers that have done heinous things. They deserve to be fired. They were scoundrels. They, uh, or they sinned, you know, and, and even if they repented, you know, their, their influence there was gone, you know, they need to move on. Uh, and there are really good elders, you know, and good churches. So this isn't a preacher minister versus the elders or versus churches. Sure. I want to make that very clear. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as I mentioned to you, I had this idea of maybe God has called me somehow to minister to those who are in full-time congregational work and they get discouraged. Uh, they feel alone because let's be honest, um, you can't, you know, you can't really talk to the people in your congregation if you're struggling with something, right? Uh, because you feel like, oh, this person is struggling with a sin or this person is struggling with discouragement. Um, you go to your members and all of a sudden some of the members might be like, oh, well, you know, all of a sudden our minister is not perfect. So, uh, he's got issues. We need to get rid of them. You know, um, you should be able to go to your shepherds, you know, the elders of the congregation. And, and many times I've done that, but a lot of times ministers suffer in silence because certain things that they would like to bring spiritually to a shepherd in the American, you know, church context uh, the leadership many times, at least in, in, you know, the churches of Christ that I've been affiliated with for decades, uh, you know, every congregation is governed by a group of elders. And so the minister is not really uh, like the typical pastor in some congregations where you basically, you know, the pastor's in charge and, you know, there might be a board of elders, but, you know, the pastor's mostly kind of running the show. Uh, in, in my experience, you know, the shepherds are leaders. They're the ones that are in charge and the, the preacher is to preach the word. That's his main job. And, and certainly there's some shepherding in that, but, uh, the elders are, you know, the shepherds. And so you would think I, I could go to my shepherds, but it, it creates an immediate conflict because your shepherds are your employers. You know, they're the ones that interviewed you, hired you, and they're the ones that can fire you. So all that to say, Robbie, that, uh, ministers often suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought, you know, sometimes ministers' wives suffer in silence, their children, you know, because you live under a glass house when you're in full-time congregational work. And most people in churches are very kind and loving. Mm -hmm. But there's always some in every congregation that uh, will say, you know, nasty things to and about ministers, their wives, children, mm -hmm. you know, maybe too high of expectations or just kind of, you know, treat you like, well, you're you're just a hired gun, right? And I'm a member and my family built this church or my family's been here for 40 years. So, sure. you know, so all that to say that 
I felt like maybe God was calling me to uh, somehow minister to the minister, right? And his family. And I tried to get something off the ground to that effect about two years ago, which was about four or five you know, months before I got into this whole subject. And uh, I had some great opportunities lined up to try to share about it, but the uh, doors were shut, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I became discouraged. I thought, well, gee, God, I don't understand. You know, uh, I've been through some traumatic experiences and frustrations and crisis and challenges, and, and I thought that I was well equipped to encourage somebody in a similar situation, but the timing just didn't seem right. And so I thought, well, maybe the problem with that was that's not what God wanted me to do. But with this whole situation, uh, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And you, when you had said that to me on Friday afternoon when we talked, mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, Nate, there's a big need for somebody who's actually been in full-time ministry and someone who has been fired for these types of things. And so when you said that to me, you said, you know, this could be uh, a real big opportunity for ministry in this specific need. And so that hit me hard because immediately the first thought that popped in my mind was maybe God planted that seed two years ago in the uh, the first context to get my heart really thinking about it the past two years. Mm -hmm. And then now you come to now where I'm fired on Friday and I'm talking to people like yourself and, you know, Rick Hummer, who's been a huge encouragement to me, Mm -hmm. others, Chad Taylor. um, And everybody was saying the same thing to me. They're saying, Nate, this this is what people need. They need somebody who can understand what they've gone through. And so moving forward, I think that not only will I be doing teaching on my YouTube channel, uh, I do plan to upload in the next couple of weeks, at least, you know, a starting video that's just mainly Bible topic, you know, Bible preaching on biblical earth, you know, biblical cosmology. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think that, uh, the last 72 hours, what people have shared with me tells me that a big part of this ministry that I think that maybe I've been called to now is going to be dealing directly with people. And uh, it's going to be just like what I had envisioned before, just in a very different context I never could have imagined. So, Absolutely, because I, I do think there's a lot of people hurting. I mean, I do yeah. know for sure. Like, I get the emails, I get the messages, and a lot of people, you know, they're just almost waiting for that one person to come out first, especially pastors, because a yeah. lot of them, you know, would just go down quietly. Maybe they would get quiet afterwards. Who knows? I mean, some were still bold, but maybe they just didn't go back into ministry. They felt yeah. defeated. Um, but I think it's really going to, God's really going to use you um, in a powerful way in helping other people come forward with their stories. And I'm not just talking about people in the ministry. I'm talking yeah. about people that have been hurt. Because again, as a pastor, you know, one of the big roles is, is counseling, right? Is it, helping yes. people through times. And again, this can be, you know, a really good um, tool and also resource as well, you know, putting together stuff on your channel, but also teaching. I think it's important because, you know, as people learn about your story, about being fired, and as you do more teachings on biblical yeah. cosmology, flat earth, um, I think it's also important. I want to bring this up because I know there's a lot of people in the chat room and they're all confused and they're thinking, you know, how crazy is it that we're talking about flat earth? But <laughs> yeah. understand understand that it's important for people to realize that when we're talking about that, we're not talking about flying pan cakes in space. None of us believe that. Yeah, Even absolutely. Christians don't believe that. Non-Christians don't believe that. And there's a lot more people in flat earth than just people that believe in the Bible. That's a whole other discussion for another time. But I think it's important for people to realize, like, look, the minute you hear flat earth, you think of boats falling over the edge. You think of flying pancakes in space. You think of flat earth society. Well, nobody yeah. is part of the flat earth society. Nobody is going over any edge. And no, we're not moving we're stationary, just like the Bible says, you know, yeah. uh, Nathan Roberts, you know, has a fantastic website, flatearthdoctrine.com. And, uh, you know, he's broken down a lot of verses and he's adding to more and more um, each day. But uh, yeah. when it comes down to, you know, over, you know, 250 verses right now, when it comes to, you know, flat earth, uh, really, we're looking at the literal nature of the, the Bible. And I think it's going to be important to, you know, have that distinction. But for you being somewhere, you know, going through the trials you've gone through yeah. this topic, just attending a conference that had flat earth uh, speakers like myself and Chad Taylor and Rob Skiba, again, to me, that's just incredible. Like the question I have is maybe there's another pastor that came to that conference 
And the same yeah. thing happened to him. They had another person sure. spied on him. We don't know. But again, by you coming out and telling your story, I think a lot more people from churches, and I want to go on the record as well too, because I know there's a lot of people that are very anti-church. They're very bitter. They're saying the church is broken. You know what? The church is broken, but it's the bride of Christ. And you got to ask yourself the question, how does God look at his church, right? So even with all mm-hmm. the blemishes, we've got to basically be very careful the way we talk about the church. And yes, the church is people. Yeah. It's not just a building, but it's really important that we have a soft loving but respectful but i think it's time now to come down to you know brass tacks when it comes to principle and holding these churches to account based on the bible and saying look i'm not angry i'm not trying to get you in trouble i'm just saying are you willing to stand on the word or are you going to stand with scientism and nasa and astronauts you know i think right now god is pushing a lot of people to make to make their choice and again, a lot of these churches, when they have no problem with, you know, the fact of that evolution, I mean, that's a big conspiracy. They've lied to everyone in textbooks and they've taught this to children. Mm-hmm. But then when you say they, they've lied in the textbooks about cosmology, they're just like, no, no. I mean, the idea that they would yeah. lie so many areas, but not in cosmology. So I think this is an incredibly important topic. It's something that's very, um, you know, volatile with different emotions and reactions. But I think, you know, talking to you and getting to know your heart, Pastor, I think yeah. that you've got a, we've got very similar ideas idea when it comes to the church and i think that we can really minister and we can have a very big impact when it comes to the church and be there you know um talking about this truth because even while i've been in churches even the two churches i was kicked out of you know i was talking and again i still talk to uh, you know a few people from those churches Mm -hmm. in the church that i'm at now again it's i mean i don't agree with everything there just like you can't agree with everything that you're at you know with the church but again you can be there and as long as the essentials i looked up um i think it was the church of christ i looked up uh, because you had said you pastored in my city some years ago or you were at uh, the the church of christ in edmonton and i looked up yeah. their essential uh, doctrine yeah. um the other day on the website and i looked at their top five and they're i mean they're brothers and sisters in christ you know i looked yeah. at the top five i i'm in agreement but we always divide and we get divisive and here's the big thing i want to bring up i think is really important and you can touch on it what is yeah. so startling about biblical cosmology or flat earth is uh, you know some breath will say oh it's crazy or who cares but if it's if it's a if it's a secondary issue, why yeah. are they making it so essential in the fact of kicking people out of churches or calling yes. people heretics if it's secondary? Yes. And I had both churches that I attended with my family say it was a secondary issue, yet you know, it only took a matter of months before they were asking us to leave. Yeah. I think that's a really important point because um people say, well, you know, flat earth, I mean, what does that matter? It's not a salvation issue, blah, blah, blah. You know, there are a lot of things that you could try to put that label on and say this and that's not a salvation issue, but it is an issue of truth. And as you've said before, truth matters. So, you know, it's kind of disingenuous to say, well, uh, flat earth, biblical earth, biblical cosmology, however you want to phrase it, is not, uh, you know, it's not an issue that's, it's, it's a salvation thing. Well, okay, how many other topics are whole ministries built off of Mm-hmm. is you know uh that is not a salvation issue but you wouldn't have any problem supporting a, a ministry well, to answers, do that answers in genesis comes to mind yes, you know no one yes. no one cares that they've spent millions of dollars and again don't get me yeah. wrong they've done incredible work exposing the lies of evolution and they've done yes. great great stuff but again they've spent their entire focus and resources on one aspect of you know biblical doctrine when it comes yeah. to literal six-day creationism and the literal nature of noah's ark or you know getting into these issues but i find it so hypocritical when they'll say you know you should focus on the gospel you're wasting your time with this and i'm like i'm wasting my time with the word of god and what it says about creation it's just unbelievable what's going on well robbie let me share this and this will come as no surprise to you or any other of the guys that you know people ladies too who've been in this uh you know this movement um countless countless people have become believers in christ Mm -hmm. because they stumbled on this flat earth thing or some other related thing that was kind of strange at first uh, and they weren't saved because of flat earth, but that discussion in their own minds got them to search the scriptures, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and through the scriptures, if they were, were a Christian already, they, they were strengthened, right? If they weren't, many, many people, including, this is the weird thing uh, and the powerful thing, probably more atheists, as I've heard from many speakers, more atheists have been converted to Christ because of this subject, because they've dove into the Bible because somebody pointed out where the Bible says this and the Bible says that, and it's different from what science says. And some people go into, many people go in to debunk it, 
and they start reading the word and, you know, uh, the word is living and active, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. So it starts working on people's hearts. And uh, I want to just share, there was a young man at this conference on Take on the World 18. And, and this is just one person that my wife and I spoke to. There may have been others, probably others. But there was a young man named Griffin uh, from the Columbus area. And uh, he was sharing with us as we were in line, you know, waiting, waiting for lunch. We had like a 10, you know, we were kind of slow, slow poke. So we had like a nice 10, 15 minute wait to get in for lunch. And so, you know, you're chatting with the person next to you and Griffin's a nice, you know, nice young guy. And so he's talking with us and he shares with us that um, he came to the conference by himself. Uh, he didn't know anybody at the conference. And he says, you know, several months ago, I stumbled on this flat earth deal. Right. And so he says, I had to dive into it. Uh, into the Bible because people uh, were saying in the videos he was watching were basically saying, you know, the Bible says, the Bible says, you know, and, you know like you pointed out, uh, at least a couple hundred verses that are related to this topic. And so he shared with us that he came uh, from a family that wasn't uh, very religious at all. They'd done a few church things here and there, but they weren't, uh, you know, active believers. Uh, and he, he became a Christian because uh, indirectly through flat earth, he got into the scriptures. So, uh, you know, somebody commented on my uh, YouTube channel today, uh, you know, regarding flat earth. Well, you know, why are you so worried about dirt? You know, meaning the earth, you know, yeah. what's, why are you wasting your time with dirt? And my response to him was, uh, you know, the dirt that I'm interested in is the soil of people's hearts mm. who might be affected not by flat earth, but by the scriptures, which are living and active, right? Sure. Um, and Griffin is just one person that I've met. But you know why that one person was important to me is because it's one thing for a bunch of speakers at a conference to say, oh, you know, you don't know how many countless people, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But I would never seen that. And so I'm so thankful that Griffin uh, shared that with us. And you know why he shared that? Because he was joyous about his faith, you know. Uh, and so I'm happy that I know one person personally who has come to Christ because of diving into this subject. And, you know, why does it matter uh, when we get to heaven and, and we're together with God? Is that one soul going to matter? Absolutely. Absolutely. If I had to spend my whole life working on something so that one more person could be with the Lord eternally, sign me up. You're about to get a lot more uh, people telling you and sharing their testimony. I can I can say that it must be in the tens of thousands um, of people that have instantly, in a split second, um, yeah. just said, "Wow, there's a creator." And from that journey, you know, yeah. I, I don't know of any other investigation. Now, you can yeah. look at it this many ways. I, I was doing a interview today uh, with a major media, and I was saying that there's three types of people that come to this topic there's you know yeah. bible-minded you know literal creationist that type of thing but there's also like a conspiratorial type you know connecting the dots figuring out the lies sure, of the world sure. but then there's also yeah. the scientific the pure i want to know the scientific empirical science you know i want to prove the earth from earth and and it's wonderful to yeah. see three massive groups but what the common denominator between everyone that comes to enclosed cosmology flat earth however you want to look at it um is that they all believe there's a creator in the sense that there are yeah. no atheists and flat earth. I'm not saying that everyone has to believe in the Bible, but what is so incredible is I've never seen anything that draws people to run out and buy a Bible or to yeah. look into scripture. And I say that anything that drives people to the Bible, at that point, <laughs> at that point, hearing comes from, you know, hearing the word. So again, yes. faith comes by hearing, right? And again, by yeah. reading and hearing it and going to say like Rob Skiba or going to one of my videos. I mean, I'm basically doing my stuff, but again, it's scripture. So when scripture is talking to someone, it penetrates the heart, it penetrates the soul. Yes. God, it, you know, speaks through his word. And that's what's so encouraging, but I can, I can yeah. talk about so many. I mean, I had someone for one of my premieres of scientists exposed to i did a private screening in my house well i had yeah. someone that was telling me his story he was an atheist his whole life and yeah. instantly he's sitting on my couch watching scientism exposed too you know and he was open <laughs> he was asking questions he was talking about the bible he says i, I don't know yet you know i'm looking into things i said yeah. take your time because for me you know even when i was looking around i had to look at all the world religions i had to know for sure i said i always say this it's not important what you believe what is important is what what's the truth Yes. So just because, yes. you know, when we talk about this guy named Jesus, 
It's important not that you just believe in Jesus. Find out if he really did exist. Find out if he truly yeah. was, you know, who he said he was. And I say it's incredibly important. I mean, my yeah. whole Celebrate Truth, why I created it, wasn't so much about Flat Earth. It was about John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So mm -hmm. it was all about celebrating truth. When we celebrate truth, we are celebrating Christ, right? And the yeah. really incredible thing about this, Pastor, when it comes to creation, is what does the Bible say who is the true creator of creation? It says all yeah. things were created by him, for him, through him, you know, and, and nothing was yeah. made without him. So again, yes. what I find striking about that is we're talking about Jesus is the literal creator of creation. Um, to me, it's the most amazing thing, and I've never seen a greater witnessing opportunity. I've never seen more people being receptive to basically tolerate maybe the Bible, maybe listen yeah. to, you know, things. And so many people are getting saved. And, and I mean, there's testimonies to Rob Skiba gets, I get, I mean, I'm sure Chad yeah. Taylor, Nathan Roberts, I mean, uh, Pastor Dean Odal. So many people are getting these testimonies and they are flooding in and they are increasing intensity. I don't think people understand exactly how big this is and what we're talking about is when it comes to the church. I don't think the church yeah. understands truly what is happening behind the scenes and while they might go, well, we can just get rid of this problem by firing a pastor, they're, yeah. they're sorely mistaken. There are people that are going to rise up and pretty soon they're going to have to tackle it and the, my prayer, my hope is that churches just at least, you know, honestly, truthfully, look into this and decide carefully who they're going to stand, whose side they're going to stand on. Are we going to stand yeah. on NASA and a Christian astronaut's testimony? Or are we going to stand on the word of God? I think it's incredibly yeah. important. And I'm so grateful that, you know, you're part of this journey now with us. Yeah. I'm very excited because like I said, you know, certainly the unique, unique situation that happened with me and also the timing, like you said, I, I did not really know that people were praying for someone to step forward who would say, you know what, I've just been fired because of this. Um, and not even for teaching it, just attending a conference, you know, uh, you know, it's a quite a unique situation, but that someone would step forward and say, you know what, uh, I'm not going to stay silent about this, not because I'm trying to get anybody in trouble or cause any division or cause a problem, but because I'm convicted that this is from the word of God. And, uh, you know, I've studied, I've prayed, and if this is the conclusion that I've come to, this is what I'm going to stick with. You know, I'm going to continue to study, continue to pray, but the support that I've had and just how quickly that God has worked this into an opportunity to share with others, and like you said, not just to get truth out, but to minister to hurting hearts, mm -hmm. you know, um, how many ministers after something like this uh, would just quit the ministry, you know? Uh, that could have easily come into my mind, but because of the providence of God, because of the grace of God, because of just the timing of everything, uh, within an hour of being fired, when I spoke with Chad Taylor, uh, he had been praying for me for a couple of weeks since the conference, within an hour of being fired, uh, you know, and Chad, you know, he's a cautious guy. Mm -hmm. He's not a guy, you know, he wrote his book. It took him several years of diligence to put that together. Um, He's, he, you know, he was telling me before I got fired that, you know, this might be something that takes months, years, you know, you don't know what God's will is. Maybe the elders will meet with you and discuss it. May, you know, maybe you're just going to have to take a stand someday and get fired, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, even Chad, w who's very cautious and was giving me very solid advice to say, look, don't try to do too much too fast. Mm -hmm. When I called him the very next day, and that's, what's so funny was call him on Thursday <laughs> Friday, everything has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And Chad uh, was able to keep pace with that. And he says, you know, Nate, um, he says, God seemingly has answered your prayer. And he's answered it in such a way to where you're completely free now mm -hmm. to do whatever you feel God is calling you to do. And he says, if you, if you can't see this as God's answer, you know, what does God have to do? You know? Mm -hmm. So it was at that point that the peace came across. And after talking with you and others, I said, I just, you know, spent five hours on a Friday afternoon and evening with several different people. And they're all telling me the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this is a great need and uh, ministry opportunity. So it didn't take me very long to not worry about being fired. And, uh, you know, the financial end of it, you know, obviously, um, uh, the church, you know, is going to give me a severance, you know, hopefully, uh, this Friday or by next week for sure. And, but that's only going to be 10 weeks, you know, uh, 
I have a family of six and uh, we've just lost about 60% of our income by me being fired. So, but that never was a concern. And that's what tells me that that's, that's, this is from God Mm -hmm. because I've worried about money my whole life. I've worried about how am I going to take care of my family? You know, Mm -hmm. things, things have always been, you know, kind of paycheck to paycheck. But that to me was the confirmation that I needed to say, when I have the peace that passes all understanding, where does that come from? Scripture says it only comes from God. Mm -hmm. And I was experiencing that peace. Mm -hmm. And so I tested that spirit. And to me, it was, this is God. And I don't know exactly what he's doing. I don't know why this is happening so quickly, but I, you know, I've prayed about this. Mm -hmm. So I would be a hypocrite. I would be a, a, terrible servant of God to just be like, nah, yeah, this thing's blowing up, but it's not a thing, you know? So, but we got to get the message out. And that's, uh, and it's incredibly important. And I would say that anyone that's listening in, or you're watching this video afterwards, uh, in the description, there is a GoFundMe that Nathan has set up. It's called Fired for Truth. The link is in the description, but if you can help uh, Nathan out in any way uh, and his family, um, he would really appreciate it. Again, it's a GoFundMe. It will, uh, it will definitely help out. Like I said, the severance package will only go so far, but it's incredibly important going forward how he is going to be, you know, really focusing on ministering, you know, to the church, to ministers, um, you know, and really bringing out this topic in a in a strong way, which which we're really encouraged by that, uh, you know, you are taking a stand, that you are telling your story, and again, you know, having the right approach to this because you know you could get all angry or you could you know start mentioning names and and the nice thing about it is you understand that you know if anything you you really want to pray for these elders, you really want to um, sure. you know, do do that to say that hey, if they even hear this video at another time or watch it, um, they can see that uh, you know you really aren't you know angry. Of course, you're you were you were upset and and you were hurt by it, and you know yeah. it's a little bit frightening. But you know God's in control and He will provide for you. But I think that it does, like Chad had mentioned, it really does free you up now. You have no change. Yeah. You don't have to worry about attending a conference on your personal time and not being able to tell anyone. Now you can joyously tell people yeah. that uh, you're going to be coming to this conference or you're going to be coming to that conference. So I think that's the exciting yeah. part uh, of it all. Is Well, who, who I never would have thought in a million years that in 72 hours, uh, my social media and YouTube channels and things would be going viral. I mean... This is this is how uh, you know how out of touch I am with that. I told my kids, I said, "Hey, you know, Robbie Davidson just messaged me, and he said, Nate, he says, you know, you're not going to believe this. Your stuff is going viral." I'm like, "What does that even mean?" You know, I was kind of joking around. I said, "Hey, one of you kids, you know, Google Google what this is," because I just didn't have a context. Like, yeah. and and I, I literally uh, I was getting ready to do my interview with Chad Taylor. Mm-hmm. And my phone was getting notification pop-ups every two to three seconds for like three mm-hmm. hours straight. And then when we when we got ready to do the interview, I said, hey, Chad, uh, I'm going to turn these notifications off, man. You know, and uh, I can't even keep up. I've tried my best uh, since since I was fired and I have a lot of time on my hands. I've tried my best the last 72 hours to try to respond to personal messages that people have given me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I know I'm missing a lot just because I, I, I've been overwhelmed. But you know what? There's another confirmation. Mm-hmm. I had my original YouTube channel that really nobody knew about for six months, and I had 17 subscribers. Mm-hmm. To me, that tells you this can only be God, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. The only thing that changed from six months ago when I had 17 subscribers and nobody talking about Nate Wolf, you know, who's Nate Wolf, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh you know, most people, even in Oregon, probably don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the whole situation here is that this is a God thing. Over and over and over in the last 72 hours since being let go, uh, I've gotten confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. And so I have no other recourse, thought, desire than to follow through with this and see where God takes this. And it's, I want to make this clear, it's all for his glory, you know. Sure, I, I feel I feel privileged. And, you know, Chad Taylor can tell you, I told him at the conference, I have been praying to God that I would have the courage to somehow start to share what I've learned because, you know, I've been sitting on, you know, my rear studying, which is great, Mm -hmm. 
for a year and a half, but I hadn't contributed at all, even though for a year at least on this particular topic, I was already convinced 100% that this was the word of God, you know, not YouTube. This Mm -hmm. is the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with that, it's like I told Chad weeks ago, uh, I'm praying that to see if God could use me in this in this movement, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't think it was going to happen. You know, I just mm-hmm. thought basically I'm willing. And so with everything blowing up like it has, you know, on social media and things and people just sharing it. And uh, I've had so many encouraging messages, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, to probably a month before the seminar took place, the conference, you know, I started hanging out on Celebrate Truths, you know, live stream mm-hmm. and meeting the mods and people that would chat. And so, you know, I was just a guy in the chat, you know, big shout out to my mods because uh, when ta- I talked to pastor yes, uh, Nate, yes. he really told me that you guys do a fantastic job, but uh, Absolutely. I can't say that I appreciate them enough. They do such a phenomenal yeah. job. It's tough sometimes, you know, dealing in the yeah. chat room with trolls, but I always tell them to, you know, <laughs> show some mercy. I was there one day. Yeah. I used to make fun of Christians, right? So I might've been one of those trolls. So I just yeah. say, you know, you know, just have a reasonable discernment, but when it's too much, just, you know, get rid of someone, but they do yeah. a fantastic <laughs> job. But I appreciate that. You mentioned also that, yeah. you know, after, after when we, met at the at the conference and you got um the dvds scientism exposed and scientism exposed too because you had brought up your family how did that go over when you you said that when you got back from the conference you watched the two my two movies scientism exposed how did the family uh respond when uh, you watched uh my uh, films with them yeah i mean it was kind of like you know we honestly we didn't really give the kids a choice it was kind of like hey guess what we're having family you know family movie time tonight you know (laughs) And it wasn't that we were forcing them into a belief. It was just that this document, uh, you know, you need, you know, this documentary, you need to just watch it. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, like I said, they've already come this way with us. So it's not like, oh, they didn't believe in it. And then you're forcing this on your kids. Oh, that's abuse. You know, uh, somebody would say, Mm -hmm. but, uh, we watched, we watched the videos and, you know, it's, it's kind of like you started out, the kids are like, oh, you know, I'd rather be, you know, on my iPad or I'd rather go skateboarding with my buddies or, you know, I'd rather go watch paint dry or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But five minutes into the video, they're just like glued to it, you know? And uh, so, yeah, that w- I knew it would be a, a huge tool because I watched them online, you know, for mm-hmm. free. And let me just say, I appreciate you doing that. Um, and, you know, I didn't have a lot of uh, extra cash for the conference, you know? So I'm like, okay, you know, I got like, I got about 80 bucks to spend here, you know? Uh, and that was tough for me. Cause I'm like, you know, I really want to buy Chad's book, but I really also want to get these, uh, scientism exposed DVDs. And then, you know, Rob Skiba, man, I, I want to get, I watched the Babylon rising, you know, mm-hmm. uh, videos on YouTube, but I, I, I'm old school. I like to get a book in my hand. I, I like to underline things, add scripture references to sticky notes, you know, bookmarks, the nine yards. So, Yeah, I just, uh, I felt like that was a a good tool. And again, the timing of not just all of the study over the year and a half, but it just seemed to me like since about two to three weeks before the conference till when I got let go, uh, that God really just kind of put everything into like a light bulb moment. And honestly, if I hadn't gotten fired, I would have just, you know, been seeking to say, Hey, maybe in the next few weeks or months, we could kind of broach the subject. And, you know, I was, uh, in this for the long haul. I mean, we had no plans to leave the church Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, our youngest daughter still has three years of high school left. You know, we were kind of thinking, Hey, you know, things are going pretty well. And, uh, the earliest we would even consider, you know, is it time for a change or, you know, am I less effective now? I've been here, you know, 10 years by that point, that would have been the earliest that I would have even entertained a thought, you know, about leaving the church or leaving congregational ministry. But, uh, to be honest with you at this point, I, I feel like this is what God has called me to in an amazing way. And, And who am I to say, nah, you know, I don't think so. No, what's so that? yeah, yeah, it's absolutely it's so encouraging to to hear yeah. your story, uh, to just to hear your boldness. Um, also, just you know, you would think that uh, your spirit would be down, and you know, it'd be a really tough time, which it is. But uh, yeah. again, God's <laughs> giving you this uh, just excitement and almost just the freedom, knowing that you're just you're able to go on forward 
based on what God is going to call you to do. And I think you're going to do incredible things. <clears throat> and God's going to be doing some huge ministry through you, um, also just with your story, but also touching on this topic, because a lot of people are going to be like, well, wait a minute. I mean, it's one thing if people want to believe in flat earth. That's kind of crazy. But yeah. why would you get yeah. fired over it? Why would you get fired yeah. over it? I mean, so, yeah. you know, I always use that example that even if you're going to come to this topic and think it's crazy or stupid, or who cares anyways, it should still raise the alarm bells when all of a sudden you know, someone's getting fired. And again, you're not yeah. alone. This is where, I mean, this interview is about church and ministry and, you yeah. know, being a pastor, but I know certain people that have been fired from their job for bringing yeah. this up. Um, I met up with a meetup in my city and gentleman was there and he's been fired over two jobs already, but he's very wow. vocal. And I'm like, well, maybe yeah. you should maybe keep it on the down low. A little bit. He's like, no, he's like yeah. that type of guy. He's like, I can't. And I'm like, that's yeah. cool. You yeah. know, everyone's not yeah. called to do that. But what I'm yeah. saying is there's people like you that are going to be bold. And because you're like the first to basically tell your story to say, look, I was part of, you know, the church, this is what happened. And just your approach, I think being loving, uh, but also based on principle, that's where I'm at. And that's why I thought it was yeah. so important to get you on so quickly because again i'm dealing with this issue myself and i really do feel called pastor to the church people say you know what forget them just run away from the church who cares they're all deceived anyways and i'm like no they're not they're still my brothers and sisters in christ and mm -hmm. again five years ago i still believed in the solar system the big bang heliocentric you know universe yeah so what does that say so <clears throat> i think that if we ever get to a point and i i bring this up is very very important and i brought this up with rob skiba and dean odell and chad taylor and uh, Nathan yeah. Roberts and all of the great, wonderful biblical flat earth um, teachers and people in, you know, this, uh, you know, as you say, movement, I say community yeah. just because the flat yeah, earth sure. doesn't move. I think it's not yeah. ironic that we say <laughs> flat earth movement yeah. and the earth doesn't move. I just think it's kind true. of funny. But anyways, yeah, I think it's important that we make sure that yes, truth is important. This is incredibly important when it comes to the word of God, but we can't make flat earth salvational for our brothers yes. and sisters in Christ. Now, yes. flat yes. earth, I look at it as a, as a conduit towards the gospel. Again, it basically draws people to the gospel, yeah. the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But what I say is when it comes to our brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ, we cannot make this salvational and they can't think for one minute that we are. Um, so yeah. I think it's important that we go on the record and say, look, this is important. But if you're my brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, I, I'm doubting your salvation because you still believe in the Big Bang, heliocentric, you know, cosmology. Yeah, yeah. But again, let's get down to looking at scripture. And again, it's so amazing that God's waking so many people up everywhere um, about this topic and especially in the church i think there's going to be a huge revival it's already taking place and more and more people in the pulpit in ministry are going to start speaking yeah. out against this and again i think it's important because there is a tidal wave of people christian ministries and also churches and also pastors that have aggressively come against this in a big way yeah. but yet they have done no research they still believe that we believe that we're on a flying pancake in space <laughs> and i'm like Wait a minute, if you're going to attack yeah. Christians or you're going to be, you know, warning your flock about dangerous Christian teachers, at yeah. least be clear about what we believe. None of us believe. We believe a firmament. We're in an yes. enclosed cosmology. That is, doesn't mean we're flying yeah. around outer space. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, being on a flat type of plane, you know, of course there's mountains and, you know, there's different elevations and things. There's valleys, you know. Uh, it's We're not talking about, like you said, flat as a pancake. But we're talking about a flat plane, you know, uh, that we believe the scriptures uh, are clear that there is a firmament uh, or a dome, as some versions say, mm -hmm. you know. And and one of the first videos that I want to do, hopefully in the next couple of weeks on this subject, just about scripture, you know, not, you know, not uh, any other topic. And I'm the first thing I want to do is just re-examine Genesis one. Because I obviously Genesis one is the foundation of create of all the creation. And I think that if a person, you know, like, where do you start? Uh, maybe we've scared some people off saying, oh, you know, Nate had to study this a year and a half and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But really early on, it was me looking into Genesis chapter one mm -hmm. that broke it open to say, you know, I'm seeing some stuff here. And if I'm seeing it in Genesis one, that means, you know, God doesn't say something just one time and then he doesn't bring it up again. You're going to see this as a consistent thread in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, folks like Nathan Roberts and Chad Taylor and others have pointed that out. So, yeah, it's so important. And I do want to stress, uh, I recognize that it's, it's not about me. You know, I'm just maybe a conduit, uh, a servant, and I'm, I feel privileged that God would, would allow me to be in this position now. I mean, um, like you said, I could be depressed, discouraged. 
I could be just looking for to work for another congregation just because I, you know, I got to put food on the table. But I feel like this is something that has God written all over it. And so, you know, I'm going to continue in prayer. But um, like I said, Griffin, you know, that's just one soul. And uh, I, I know there'll be more to come, you know, and so it's going to be it's going to be worth it. Yeah, and you had, uh, you had actually explained uh, yep. as far as getting more involved with the uh, community and also possibly attending some conferences in the near future. So I don't know if you yeah. want to maybe speak on that, what you're kind of thinking maybe possibly sure. doing. Yeah, uh, you know, I appreciate Dean Odell. He reached out to me uh, um, also within a day or two when I got fired. And uh, he, you know, he's getting ready to do the Skyfall conference, you know, and, and uh, uh, that's like October 5th, you know, mm-hmm. and... So uh, he said, you know, we were full before, but because of a few cancellations, we had a few tickets come up. And so at first, you know, I was like, well, you know, let me see about that. And then my wife was like, what do you have going on? And uh, we plan to go visit our son uh, down in Arkansas. Okay. The end of uh, uh, September, first few days of October. And I said, you know, we're, we're going to be in Arkansas. It's only seven hours from Auburn, Alabama, you know, where this thing's going to be. I said, that's just a hop, skip and a jump. You know, if I had to start in Toledo area and drive down there, that's a 20 hour deal, you know? So, uh, my wife encouraged me. She's like, if, if you have an invitation, go. And, uh, you know, Dean Odell, he says, you know, we're going to have uh, some testimony time built in. He says, if you'd like to share your testimony, you know, that'd be great. So I'm planning to go uh, going to Skyfall 18. And then you, you know, I had mentioned to you that uh, after going to the Take on the World 18 conference, I was kind of like, well, you know, I just used some vacation time and things this fall were going to be busy at the church. I thought I really wanted to go to the Flat Earth International Conference, you know, last year, but that wasn't going to work. And uh, and then I thought, oh, I would love to go to Denver in November. You know, that would be sweet. I thought, nah, I don't I don't have the time. I don't have the vacation. It's too far away, blah, 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 blah. And so you were saying, you know, uh, maybe we can explore some opportunity with that as well. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know exactly where this will go, but if the Lord op- opens up an opportunity at some of these conferences, um, I'll go for two reasons. I'll go as a continued learner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I have an opportunity to, you know, do some breakout sessions, do some teaching, share testimony, uh, man, I, I, I think that would be very fulfilling. And so uh, I guess I'll take what comes my way and and trust that the Lord works out those details and the finances on that and everything else. So sure, and I think it would be yeah. uh, an important, you know, obviously with Skyfall in Alabama, at Pastor Dean's yeah. um, conference, but also with the Flat Earth International Conference, I think it'd be really important for you to be there um, for many reasons. But also, as you get more connected, yeah. people are going to get to know you, they want to meet you. But also, I think networking uh, connections. Um, there yeah. might be all sorts of opportunities. I know that there's going to be a need for. And I'm not going to say flatter churches, but what I'm saying is yeah. there are, you know, a lot of people looking at uh, churches that are willing to talk about different topics. And I know you wouldn't want to, you know, start up a flat earth church, but it is yeah. nice to know yeah. that there's going to be more and more churches that are going to be springing up that say we stand on the Bible when it comes to our cosmology. We stand on yeah. the literal interpretation of scripture and they stand yeah. firmly on it, whether, you know, that they believe that the sun, moon and stars are all moving, but the earth doesn't move. I mean, scripture says over and over the yes. earth doesn't move. So I think that's yeah. something that you know as christians they're gonna to have to look into more and more and, and wrestle with the fact of saying do we take scripture like allegory or you know poet poetic when you know why is scripture saying over and over and over the earth yeah. doesn't move i think a lot yeah. more people are even becoming more geocentric you know before they even go into you know flat earth um but i think that's going to be important but again you're you're yeah. now free you're now open to explore and i think the way that the community has reached out to you even um you know all of the different speakers that were at take on the world and and other, you know, YouTube channels have reached out yeah. to you as well. And again, we're all very supportive of you. Again, I wanted to do the show. I want to make sure that everyone that's listening to this video, subscribe to, you know, Pastor Nate Wolf's uh, YouTube channel. It's called Fired for Truth. Uh, I will be linking in the description. So after yeah. we are done this broadcast, uh, when the video is live, I will have the GoFundMe in there. Also his channel, reach out. Obviously, you know, prayer is important. If you can help him out financially, that would be amazing as well too. But I... I I really truly believe that you are being called to really speak your your testimony, your story, mm. uh, and also go incredibly bold on this topic, just like uh, Pastor yeah. Dean Odell has done, uh, you know, with uh, with his pulp 
pulpit with his church. Um, yeah. You know, it's incredibly important because, again, sometimes when we've got a lot of different pastors speaking out of, against this topic and you say, well, you know, people will say, well, you know, did you get any training, you know, Robbie Davidson or Nathan <laughs> Roberts? And, and again, yeah. I know that, that schooling is not everything. But again, sometimes it holds weight to the people that are on the fence. And yeah. when the people that are on the fence looking into this, when they see, well, I, I want to hear what this pastor has to say, it carries weight. And again, I'm not yeah. big on titles and I'm not big so much on education saying that, oh, people with degrees, we got to, you know, listen to them because they're so much smarter. I think, you know, even if someone with their degree that's humble and searches earnestly for the truth, you know, will find yeah. it. But having, you know, knowing that you've you know ministered, you've pastored at churches, I think will hold a lot of weight with people that are looking into this topic and it will lend credibility. They'll be like, well, wait a minute, you know, he's actually looking into this what's going on you know and especially yeah, if yeah. we dispel the nonsense between you know um you know flying pancakes or our boats flying <laughs> over the edge when we really truly understand yeah. biblical cosmology when we look at genesis like you said as the foundation and like in my in my films on my channel and even in my new book yeah. that i just released i go through the idea that basically all it's leading to is hiding the true creator of creation and yes. when you muddy the waters and make us you know sound like we're a random accident we're on a spinning ball flying through space it really distorts it really changes everything when the Bible says that God is up, for example. I mean, where is up yeah. on a spinning ball flying through space? So I believe yeah. that the perversion has started there. And I think people that really want to look into Scripture, they could be like, wow, and they can have that moment. And regardless if yeah. 99 people laugh at us or mock us, there'll be that one person that will say, Pastor, tell me more. You know yeah. what? I, I really do believe that this is the truth and what you're saying. Because it's not that this pastor is saying you know, something. He's saying, read the Bible. That's the beautiful yeah. thing about this. It's not like yeah. we, we have to have books or DVDs or teachings. We can just say, look, look to the Bible. Why does the yeah. Bible say that the earth doesn't move? Why does the Bible say it rests on pillars? These are the things mm -hmm. that we have to wrestle with. The fact of Noah's flood, you know, the windows of heaven opening up. Well, those aren't literal. Really? The windows of yeah. heaven opened up? It talks about three yeah. water sources. So all that to say yeah. that I think it's incredibly important. I'm very encouraged. Uh, I will definitely be praying for you and your family. Yeah. I will be holding you up in prayer you know that I'm a phone call away and I'm going to make it as possible as I possibly can, you know, for yeah. the Flat Earth International Conference. But one last thing I want to say, because yes. I mean, I didn't know your backstory about, you know, when you came and t to my table at Take on the World and yeah. you know, after hearing me talk and you wanted to get my movies and stuff, but I'll make yeah. sure that in Skyfall, I get you a bunch of of DVDs so that you can use it, you know, um, you can get it out yeah. to people as a resource okay. because I really did, you know, God laid it on my heart to create that uh, to get to people because it doesn't even mention yeah. this. It doesn't even mention flat earth in number yeah. one at all. None of the speakers at all um, mention, you know, the two words flat earth. It's a way of, that's a of, good point to yeah, make. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. really is because again, sometimes this topic is off putting. They, they start thinking craziness. So if you just say, Hey, what's the scientism? You can be like, Oh, it's like evolution, you know? Oh, Oh yeah. really? And it's like, what other things are scientific? scientism because i think yeah. a lot of christians the way I, I basically tracked that documentary was they're already nodding their head because they're already believing a lot of the stuff they're they they don't believe that they evolved from apes and slime and they evolved <laughs> over millions of years so they're just tracking yeah. along and then all of a sudden it starts getting into different areas like nasa cosmology why is it that you know copernicus started flipping everything upside down you know 500 mm -hmm. years ago and again yeah. he was very against the the, the uh, tomolic system when it came to geocentricity and and one, I would say, startling thing when you're bringing this up with Christians is the occultic nature of some of these scientists, the occultic yeah. nature of, you know, the beginnings and the founders of NASA. I mean, this yeah. is like satanic. I mean, Jack Parsons was an admitted, you know, Satanist. He's doing, you know, sex magic rituals. And yeah. so to me, as Christians, we need to look into it and wonder what's going on. Why are we getting all this yeah. information from agencies that basically we're like, you know, praising Lucifer and doing, you know, sex magic rituals. And these are the founders of NASA, you know, Vernon Von yeah. Braun and Jack Parsons. So to me, yeah. I'm very encouraged. And like I said, I think that you're going to have a lot of people surrounding you. So I guess closing up, we've got about uh, maybe 10 minutes left. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to maybe get some last uh, closing remarks, something that you thought would be um, sure. you know, important to basically tell people. I want you to make sure that people know about, you know, your channels, your channel, yeah. and also yeah. anything in the future that you think that uh, you might need assistance on, you know, prayer, um, yeah. but also some projects that you might be looking at doing here in the future. Sure. Thank you. That's a great opportunity. Um, I want to just say real quick before I forget, uh, just some place to start for people in their study. If they say, well, I'm not going on YouTube and watching this, that I want to start with the Bible. Here's what I would encourage you to do. Somebody called me today and I walked them through Genesis one 
And I said, look, this is the beginning. This is God saying, here's what I did. And so I would encourage everyone who's even skeptical about this or still thinks, well, this is still kind of crazy. I, I, I still, is this a dream? You know, what is this stuff? Um, go back to Genesis 1, particularly when he starts talking about God created the lights, okay, in the firmament, in the heavens. Okay, we know that there was two greater lights, the sun to govern the day and the moon to govern the night. Notice like around, I think it's around verse 16 or so, where it says, uh, you know, the sun, moon, and stars, right? Where does it say planets there? You will not find planets either in word or idea in Genesis chapter 1. Then you go over to Genesis chapter 2. So read all of Genesis 1, but focus particularly uh, on the lights in heaven, the sun, moon, and stars, right? So right off the bat, the sun is a light. It is not a star. Science says star, uh, the sun is a star, right? And stars are suns. But the word of God in Genesis 1 says that the sun and the moon are lights that light the earth. And also they are for signs, seasons, days, and years, right? He tells you exactly what's the purpose for. And what, what floors me is that, I've read this hundreds of times, that it says to give light on the earth, so what is the focus of God's creation? The focus of God's creation is not the sun or planets or anything else. So, and he made the stars, right? That's a whole other topic. But the next thing to do is look in Genesis 2, verse 1. It basically says everything in the heavens and the earth that God created were completed, were finished, right? Okay, so if Genesis 1 tells you what he did, and Genesis 2 verse 1 tells you that everything in heaven and earth was, and all the host of heaven were completed, finished, there's no planets, you know, there's no billions of galaxies everywhere, uh, you know, we're not flying through space in an ever-expanding universe. That's just a little teaser of, of what my first uh, biblical earth video is going to be. I'm going to dive right into Genesis 1 and flesh out what I just shared with you. So I want to get that out there because uh, I want to make sure that I direct people to the Bible, you know, during this conversation and give them a starter. And so um, the other thing is, is that the prayers are so important. Uh, without uh, prayers and encouragement, I would have probably just said, you know, I'm convicted on this, but you know, I just don't know where to go with this. And uh, so prayer is so important. As far as other opportunities, you know, there may be something that God has in store that I, I don't even envision that yet. So I'm going to do my best to just try to take it one day at a time. Uh, I'm looking forward to some of these conferences. And if I can get out to Denver, that would be amazing. Uh, but, you know, again, I've had some pretty wise counselors helping me through this too. So I've got to take it one day at a time, stay in prayer. Uh, and Chad Taylor, he's like, just remember, Nate, you know, it's not about you. So uh, it's about what God is doing in the situation and how God is helping others. So that's that's enough for me right now. I'm content with that. I'm at peace about it. I'm excited about it. Um, and I feel like this is something that I can do really to the glory of God. And that, and that gives me a, a great pleasure. So. Well, it's been a real uh, pleasure having you on, and I uh, just wanted to mention that I would love to do a follow-up show so that yeah. uh, at some point in the future, we could do a show and we can kind of talk about things that have transpired. But also, I think it would be really important um, for all the viewers and people in the chat that we could do a Q&A. So we will do that next time. Um, sure. We're going to basically end the show tonight, but I just want to let everyone know that is in the live chat. Um, we will do a follow-up and we will do a Q&A so that you can ask questions um, from Pastor Nate. And I think a lot more things will have come to uh, fruition as far as uh, you know his direction, what's happening. And there's just so much yeah. happening right now when it comes to um, just all the recent news and everything going yeah. viral. And uh, it's great that uh, Pastor Nate had got the definition of viral. So now he's going to, yeah. honey, I'm going viral now. But yeah, yeah it, it yeah. truly is a God thing. It truly is a God thing. And yeah. I, I really do believe, I do know that there were people praying and I knew that, uh, you know, 
uh, for me, it was very important, and I will always be in uh, support of anyone in ministry that comes forward and wants to speak about this and definitely has the right attitude. I think that if someone's going to get vicious and start calling down the church and you know saying nasty yeah. names, I think that's just not the way that we need to approach this. Um, yeah. Because again, if we all just basically walk away from all these churches, well, who's there? You know, so yeah. I, I really believe that it's important. God is calling certain people. I know that certain people are called yeah. to leave the church and maybe you know do a home church, do their own thing. But there are certain people like myself and, and my family that we believe that we're called to the church and we're going to be there. And again, it's important. And we know we're not going to try to force everyone to believe what we believe. Really, at the end of the day, I'm not even asking people to believe what I believe. I'm just saying, let's let's believe what the yeah. Bible has to say. And why are we making excuses? And why are we, you know, trying to make things, some things poetic and allegory and some things literal? How, why are we yeah. picking and choosing when it comes to creation? And I say this because yeah. a lot of people will hit me with like, you can't take everything in the Bible literal. And I'm saying, well, you know, I understand that. But I'm saying yeah. when it comes to creation, yes, we can. And even when we get Amen. into like Psalms and stuff that's poetic, po poetry conveys something. For example, yes. when we get into, you know, Psalms 19, when it comes into the sun runs a race like a bridegroom, you know, it's yeah. doing something, it's moving. And you know, yes. we're told by scientism that no, the sun doesn't move, you know, and that everything revolves around the sun. So if you look at what scientism has done, and I believe that Satan has literally used it as a Trojan horse because it's disguised mm. it as true proven empirical science and when people first see it they're like nope science is truth but what i'm saying is the most things that we're being taught when it comes to the origins when it comes to a lot of what we're seeing in mainstream media is no longer true science it's scientism and satan's been behind it for a very long time right back to the yeah. garden of eden when he said did god say did god say that and when yeah. when people in the church are making excuses and going yes but pastor did god really mean that in genesis did he mean yeah. the firmament like, or is that just allegory? It's like, yeah. he said that for a reason. Um, we need to take this serious. So I'm incredibly encouraged. I know many people are going to be reaching out to you. You'll be doing a lot of shows. Um, if anyone, you know, uh, hasn't yet, please sub to Pastor Nate's channel. It's called Fired for Truth. Uh, he's also got Discerning Dad 73, but I believe that most of your stuff is going to be on uh, Fired for Truth, I believe, is what you're doing. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to use Fired for Truth moving forward as the main channel that's addressing these issues. I'm still going to post, you know, some things uh, on Discerning Dad 73, but uh, I really think like that would be a good idea moving forward and just kind of get everybody on that same page there. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, this thing is just one day at a time and and trusting in God for the details. Well, I'm enjoying getting to know you better as a, as yeah. a pastor, but also a brother and a friend. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, you, you know, in the near future. So yeah. thanks to yeah. everyone um, that uh, joined the chat tonight. Uh, if you feel you want to encourage Pastor Nate, uh, sign up to his um, YouTube channel. Subscribe there at Fired for Truth. Also, he's on Facebook. If you do have Facebook, look up Nate Wolf. Um, if you look at the in the description, you will see links there. I really appreciate you all. You guys are so amazing. Uh, coming. I wasn't able to really answer and talk to a lot of you in the chat tonight, but again, I will do a follow-up show. I am going to be doing more live streams, having people um, on uh, different interviews. So maybe you can let me know, uh, send me a message yeah. or in the comments who you'd like to see in the f near future, but I plan on doing a lot more um, interviews and uh, moving towards doing a show for you all. But I really appreciate everyone. And like I said, God bless you, Pastor Nate. It's been um, an amazing an amazing experience. It's happened so quickly, but it was amazing to be able to meet you. And like I said, yeah. afterwards, find out who you were. I didn't even know at the time, yeah. you know, you were the person that all of a sudden people, you know, Rick Hummer had reached out to me and said, you got to talk. So I really yeah. appreciate you and uh, blessings yeah. to you. And uh, we will be talking soon. So everyone, that yes. uh, that's a wrap. We're at the end of the show. So blessings to you all. And remember, celebrate truth. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And remember that Jesus is the only way, but he's also the true creator of creation. So thank you very much. Right. God bless. Take care. Thank you.